What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today I'm answering a very important and relevant question. This whole EV and Powerwall 3, or just in general battery storage question, and how the two relate, is coming up on a daily basis multiple times. So I thought this is a video I have to make in order to truly help people understand the relationship between what their solar and batteries can really do in terms of charging an EV, because a lot of people actually want to get solar or the whole reason why they even began looking at solar was because they got an EV or were getting an EV and thought it only makes sense to kind of pair the two and it totally does but what I don't want you doing is just buying some system that isn't actually sized correctly or you're basically in the mindset that it's gonna work differently than it's really going to work and there's a lot of salespeople out there that are you know they're desperate for a sale and they'll just kind of say anything you know to get you to sign and before before I get too far into this video, if you find this helpful and you want my help, feel free to give me a call, 760-473-5878. All the information is below. You can email me as well. Check out the information below. All right, so there's a lot of people going solar with the intentions of being able to just charge their whole EV with solar, but unfortunately, this is not the case, and so I'm gonna break this down super easily. I have four whiteboards uh, to explain this, so let's just start off with the first whiteboard here. To fill an EV, now every EV is a little bit different, that's why I have a range of 58 to 180. 58 being like the standard Model 3, and 180 being like the Rivian with the biggest battery pack, so there is a range. But the Powerwall 3 and most of the batteries are around between 10 and 13 and a half kilowatt hours. Some of them get up to around 20. You can stack multiple of them next to each other, but for the purpose of this, all of these examples, I'm just using one power wall and that's 13 and a half kilowatt hours. And so if you haven't already put the two together and kind of realized the problem here, it's kind of like trying to fill a bucket with a cup of water. You know, how are we gonna fill, let's say the Model Y long range here has an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack. And if we were gonna figure out how many power wall threes it's gonna to take to fill it, you can see here that it's gonna take six power wall threes. Now, the average household will not be getting six Powerwall 3s, and in general, the solar system to support six Powerwalls is ginormous. It's way bigger than what the average house's roof can even handle. So this is obviously not uh, going to be realistic for just charging your car from zero to 100 just with your solar and batteries if you're trying to do that all in one night. It's just not realistic. All right, let's go on to the next board to kind of compare some of these different cars and see the different battery sizes in each car. Putting some of these popular EVs in comparison to the Tesla Powerwall 3, the numbers in red here is the kilowatt hour battery pack. So uh, going with the standard Model 3, it has a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's basically 4.3 Powerwall 3s. This Model S Plaid has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. You can see that's over seven Powerwall 3s. This Rivian has a range of between 106 and I, I just read that the new 2026 model, which it's unbelievable that they're already announcing that uh, in mid 24, but um, that's going to have up to a 180 kilowatt Kilowatt hour battery pack, which is absolutely insane. That's over 13 Powerwall 3s it would take to fill it. And then, of course, the Cyber Truck, you know, that Cyber Beast that everyone wants, that's right between 120 and 123 kilowatt hours. And as you can see, that is a little bit over nine Tesla Powerwall 3s to fill it. So, obviously, like I said in the previous board, no one is really gonna have, I mean, unless you're on like a, a farm or a big ranch or you know, you have a mansion or something, you're you know, you're not really gonna have probably more than three power walls. And so how are we gonna kind of get around this problem? There is a somewhat solution, but there's not a end-all solution currently if you basically need to charge your car in full from close to zero to 100 every night, and you're just gonna be charging from your garage and hoping that you're gonna have all the power from the batteries, it's just not realistic. So let's go over a couple of factual statements and strategies in order to help you get the most out of your solar in relation to charging your EV. All right, so the first thing that I want you to kind of think about is in your mind, think of one Powerwall 3 as in 13 and a half kilowatt hours, 
kind of being like about two to three gallons of gas in terms of how far that 13 and a half kilowatt hours will get you. So that's the first thing. Basically every night, if you were to have one Powerwall 3 worth of power, it'd be like filling up your car every night with two or three gallons of gas. Now that could be totally fine depending upon your commute. Like for example, if you have a 20 mile, 30, 40 mile commute even, you're probably gonna be just fine. And if you don't do a bunch of extra driving in a singular day, you'll probably be able to get most of your power when you come home at night, all from the solar and batteries because you just don't need that much more than 13 and a half kilowatt hours. But if you need a bunch more than that, that's when you know, you're know you gonna take from the Powerwall 3 first, and then from there use grid power after that to fill up the rest of your car. So that's just kind of the reality, but that's kind of how I want you to think about this. Now, before in the, the previous board, I made this example of you need you know six or eight or 13 Powerwall 3s to fill an EV, but you're not gonna have that many Powerwall 3s in reality. The average house is only gonna have one or two. A big system, like maybe over 12 or 13 kilowatts, maybe gets into the range of a third Powerwall 3. So most are really gonna just have one or two. And that Powerwall 3 is also sharing the load with the house. And so you could not even have a full Powerwall or two full Powerwall 3s to drain into a car. It could be 75% depleted before you even really start charging your car depending upon the day or time of year. So there's lots of different factors that are going to affect really how much you're going to be left for the car. Okay, so generally speaking, you cannot charge. I really want to make sure that everyone understands this because most people think they're just going to get the batteries and then they can kind of do whatever they want. They can charge from the solar, charge from the grid. There could be some utilities around the country that let you charge your batteries up from the grid, but for the most part, especially here in California, I know for a fact that when you do the net metering documentation, you have to check the box that says you're only going to ever export power from the battery. So what that means is unless it's emergency storm scenario where you can get a quick charge from the grid, that's the only time they'll let you. Other than that, you need enough solar power to even feed into your batteries to fill them up. Having a ton of batteries and not enough solar, I think of as like having rainwater barrels outside of your house in a place where it doesn't rain that much. They're there, it's great in theory, but are they ever gonna be filled up? And you're gonna probably use that power or, or that, that water at a much quicker rate than what you get you know, on a daily basis or Obviously, it's not the perfect analogy, but the point is that you're basically gonna have batteries that sit empty for the most part, or barely get a charge that's worth much of anything. So just having more batteries isn't necessarily the answer. You need the right amount of solar panels to charge up those batteries. All right, so let's flip the board over here. Basically, the mindset that you have to adopt here is that even with solar and batteries, you're not, most likely not, going to get all of your power from the solar and batteries when charging your EV. It's just not realistic. So you have to kind of be in the mindset that if you are looking to be as efficient as possible in terms of pulling green power from your solar panels into your EV, you're gonna have to be very careful about watching the app and watch it drain power. And the minute the battery is out of juice, you want to stop charging because it's gonna automatically start taking power from the grid in that case. This is obviously not gonna be realistic for everyone's lifestyle. You know, some people, they won't have a choice. You gotta fill up your car, you gotta, you gotta drive. But if you have the opportunity to kind of be careful and you, you wanna be conscious about it, it's gonna require just a little bit of managing your charging behavior from the app. Also, when I'm doing my consultations and helping people size their systems and batteries, I always like to really ask them, you know, how much do you like to charge out in public charging stations, superchargers, and then in general as well, what time of day are you really charging at your house? Because depending upon time of day, you may or may not really need extra batteries for that charging if you can be uh, diligent with your schedule. So this is a very important statement here because it depends on the situation, but it may totally make sense to cover your charging through a battery, but it also may not be financially incentivizing at all. You know, for example, if you're in a place that has a one-to-one -one net metering agreement, I'm kind of jumping the gun and talking about it here, but if you're in a one-to-one -one net metering you don't even want to be thinking about trying to charge your 
car from a battery, just take the grid power, send the credits back in the daytime, and then take your power at night when you need it, you're getting a one-to-one -one credit, you're net zeroed out anyways, if you have enough solar production. If that's not the case though, it may not make sense at all even if you're not in a one-to-one -one area, but it may not make sense at all to charge your car from battery because you have different times of day. And if you're, for example, charging in the middle of night, which is usually the cheapest time of day, it may not be less expensive to get that power from your solar and batteries, whereas in the middle of the day when they're charging a fortune for that power, especially in the evening time during peak hours, it could be much less expensive to get that power from the solar or the batteries. And so it depends upon your situation. I don't expect you to figure it all out. That's my job. So give me a call if you, you know, if you need help, that, that's why I'm here. All right, look guys, I know this is all pretty confusing. I've been doing this for seven or eight years now almost, and I still am trying to learn all of this stuff and explain it in the simplest fashion as possible. So I work in over 30 states so do not hesitate to reach out my number is right here 760-473-5878 you can also email me at juliansolarguide at gmail.com all the, the information is right below in the description you can also fill out the form and just save a bunch of time and we'll call you back and get started right away